this abandoned city spreads across five miles of land, has 150 buildings and 60 modern roads. It could house a population of around 50,000 people. It was one of the most technologically advanced cities on the planet. But today, it lies derelict and deserted, patrolled by armed guards and protected by security barriers. The abandoned city is a modern-day Pompeii. It's as if overnight, or at least even within hours, life changed. You see a huge wheel where the local community would have recreational moments. You see children's toys. You realize that whatever happened here happened very quickly, and it was very bad. So what happened to this city? Where did all its residents go? And how was it abandoned? In 1970, the Soviet Union is in a technological race against the West. To power its global ambitions, the country creates the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. But this cutting edge facility requires tens of thousands of people. And to house these nuclear workers, Soviet planners build an entire city called Pripyat. It's very easy for us now to look and think of it as a disaster town. It's linked intrinsically with the nuclear disaster just down the road at Chernobyl. But I think you have to look at it as how it was intended and how life was before disaster struck. The iconic images that we can picture about Pripyat, the Ferris wheel that's kind of stuck there and decaying and the gas masks lying around, that tells one story in this just looking at decay. At the time when it was operational and it was functional, that was the Soviet dream and people wanted to be part of it. Though only open to those with government permission, Pripyat is designed to provide state-of-the-art housing to its residents. Despite the imposing modern architectural style, the city is designed for families and lots of them. The city wasn't finished till the very end, and all the construction had been pre-planned. This was a blossoming city, and it was the first place I'd seen in my life. There's so many roses and kids around. In a remote, dense forest, the city's planners have almost unlimited space for their new town. Without the restraints that come with expanding upon a pre-existing town, they impose a utopian architectural vision and construct a completely new, modern city. They build wide avenues for cars and public transport, as well as numerous parks and gardens between the apartment blocks. And as most of the city's population are under 30, there are plenty of sports facilities. You've got these high-rise buildings, which normally had been used for areas of high density, but yet each building is hugely spaced out with these enormous green areas in between to give people space. I think that would have been very new and very quite unique even, and maybe it was an, an identifier as, you know, this is the new way, this is how the new Soviet communities are going to be. Pripyat was iconic at the time. The heart of Pripyat is its main square. Right now we're in the central square, and this building right in front was the so-called cultural building. It was named Energetic. And to the right, you can see this was a hotel. It was called Policia. At the time of the explosion, it was a very high-tech and contemporary hotel. 
And over there, on that nine-story building, there's an emotive slogan that says, let the atom be a worker rather than a soldier. And that's how this whole thing turned out. Over the course of 15 years, the restricted city of Pripyat swells to nearly 50,000 people. But at 1.23 a.m. on the 26th of April, 1986, only three miles away, Chernobyl Nuclear Power Plant 4 releases a plume of radioactive debris into the atmosphere. A huge area covering the Ukraine and neighboring Russia is contaminated, and radiation levels increase dramatically across Europe. Reactor number four exploded, spewing radiation over much of Europe. Two others have been permanently shut down. It is the world's worst nuclear accident. The brand new city of Pripyat is now subsumed in a deadly radiation cloud. But to prevent embarrassment about this closed city and the secretive Chernobyl plant, the government publicly hides the disaster, even to its own residents. Within hours, many start falling ill. Yet amazingly, another day goes by before the authorities evacuate the city. But then, Hundreds of buses and trucks pick up Pripyat's inhabitants. They are told they would only be leaving for a few days. The layout at Pripyat, with its enormous wide avenues and big open spaces, in my mind, certainly helps the efficiency of the evacuation that took place over 48 hours. Getting the entire population, almost 50,000 people, away from that town. If you tried to do that in any kind of conglomeration that had grown organically with little streets and back roads all over the place, that would have been a lot more difficult. It would have been one heck of a challenge. Within 48 hours, the inhabitants from Pripyat and the surrounding area are evacuated, never to return. Having structure and being able to, I guess, break it all down and plan that evacuation, and then having the arteries to get people away, just made that whole evacuation work really quite efficiently. It would surprise me if the successes of what happened at Pripyat, when disaster struck, how quickly they managed to evacuate the entire city, wasn't used as best case analysis for future disasters. Today, Pripyat remains restricted, but for an altogether different reason. As part of Chernobyl's exclusion zone, this abandoned city is regulated by the state agency of Ukraine. The irony is that the whole place has now become a very popular tourist attraction. Why? I think it's that morbid fascination. We've been watching too many B-movies for decades now. You want to see in the real world what could happen on a larger scale if we get it wrong big time. Rotting away amidst nuclear fallout, Pripyat silently screams a warning of how quickly utopian dreams can become haunting nightmares.